Now you should have 30 total stitches in the round. Go ahead and move your yarn marker up and now you're going to make 8 decrease stitches. So you're going to single crochet two stitches together eight times. And this is going to form the front paw. That's one. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, and eight. And then you're just going to make one single crochet in every remaining stitch back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet in each of the remaining stitches. And you can go ahead and turn your work so that the yarn, loose yarn end is on the inside. And then just continue crocheting one single crochet in every stitch back to the yarn marker. Then you can go ahead and move the yarn marker up. Let me just finish the last stitch. And then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet in every stitch for one round. Then you're going to move your yarn mark marker up and this time you're going to make four single crochet two stitches together. So four times single crochet two stitches together. So there's one. two, three, and four. Then, after you finish your fourth one, go ahead and make one single crochet in every stitch back to the yarn marker. Then, just go ahead and continue crocheting past the yarn marker and continue just making one single crochet in every stitch until you get to the back of the foot. And then at the back of the foot is where you're going to change colors. And you can have fun changing colors for the feet. You can start with main, the main color, whatever colors you want for the feet. So I'm going to stop in the back to join my main color. So I'm going to get the main colored yarn and just bring up a loop then just chain one and then just tie a knot and then cut the previous colored yarn and then you're ready to crochet with your new color then just get your yarn marker, place it right where you left off, and then you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch around. Then at this point you can um, just remove the yarn marker and you can add beads if you want to. So just like I showed you before, you would take your smaller crochet hook that goes through the bead and then just add your bead and then continue crocheting with your regular crochet hook. If you don't want to add the beads you just continue crocheting one single crochet in every stitch. For, so for the foot I just made one single crochet between my beads.
and then I just place the beads for one round. And again, if you don't want the beads, you just continue making one single crochet into every stitch. And then after you finish placing the beads, you can go ahead and just continue making one single crochet into every stitch around. And you could place your yarn marker too to help you keep track of the rounds. So only one single crochet in every stitch around. So I went an additional 12 rounds. So counting where I joined, it's a total of 14. Then you can go ahead and use craft stuffing to stuff the foot. Then you're going to single crochet two stitches together all the way around until you are almost closed. So go ahead, finish making single crochet two together stitches all the way around or decrease stitches until you're almost closed and then come back. Then you can see how you're almost closed. Then you're going to slip stitch. So you're going to skip a stitch, go into the next stitch over, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch. And you're just going to go around slip stitching until the leg is closed. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. So go ahead and bury your loose yarn end and then you're going to need four total legs, dragon feet legs. They're all made the same way. Now after you have all four of the dragon feet, go ahead and take two of them and we're going to go ahead and get some yarn on either your tapestry needle or your long needle, upholstery needle, for sewing. And the first thing you want to do is go make sure that the paw is facing forward and then you're going to go down about three rows rounds down and then go through your knee with your needle and come out on the opposite side at the same level then you're going to go on your dragon and determine where you want to have the arm and then that's where you're going to go in with your needle at that row. So for mine, I'm about on that second color stripe, I'm about one down. And this is what it looks like from the side. And then I'm going to go through to the opposite side at the same level. And you want to make sure that you're in line at the same level. So here, going straight up, I'm about two rows out from that magic circle on the back. And then on this side, I'm about two rows up too. So imaginary line going straight up. Then you're just going to take, make sure that the other paw is facing forward and you're still going to go three rounds down and go through the opposite arm through to the opposite side and then you can see how easy it is with this longer needle I like it and then just make sure that you have the arms where you want them and then you just bring the needle through and then you want to leave a long loose yarn end on the opposite side. And then you're just going to go right back through. So now you can let go of it because you're just going to go a stitch over and then go back through the arm. And you want to come out of the arm a stitch over. So make sure that you're about a stitch over coming back through and then just pull the thread back through and then you're just going to go through the body about a stitch over and then come out on the opposite side a stitch over
then you can see how I'm just leaving about an inch between the yarns, about an inch between the body and the arms. And then I'm just going to go about a stitch over again on the arms, back out the opposite side. And again, I'm a stitch over. And then I like to go through twice. So make sure your yarn isn't tangled. And I like to leave about an inch on both sides. Then you go through the exact same way another time. Then after you've gone through twice, then you can take and cinch down the arms against the dragon. And you can cinch it down as tight as you want before tying your knot. And then the legs are sewn on the same way on the bottom. So for mine, using the Magic Circle as a landmark, I went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about nine rows up. But you just want to make sure that wherever you go in, that your dragon will be able to sit. Now you're ready to make the tail. So you can see how the dragon can sit. Here's what it looks like on the bottom. And again, you have to make sure that the feet, the paws are facing up on the hands and the feet. Now for the tail, go ahead and get your main color. And again, we're going to start with the magic circle. You're going to make your slip knot. And then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. just like we did before. Then you're going to go ahead and close it. Then you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches. So two single crochet into every stitch around for a total of 12. Then go ahead and get your yarn marker, and then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for a total of three rounds. So three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. Then we're going to make our increase rounds. You're going to take and move the yarn marker up, and for the first increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. You should have a total of 18 stitches in the round. Go ahead and move the yarn marker up and then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds. So three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. Then go ahead and move the yarn marker up and we're going to make another increase round. You're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch. And then just repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Now you should have 24 stitches in the round. Then go ahead move the yarn marker up and then just make one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds. After you finish three rounds, then you're going to go ahead and take and join your sparkly alternate colored yarn. Just bring up a loop, chain one, 
Then just tie a knot and then cut the previous colored yarn. Then you're going to make an increase round. For this increase round you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch and then just repeat that pattern all the way around back to the beginning. Now you can change colors wherever you want. For mine I'm going to make three more rounds with this color and then I'm going to change to a different color. So one single crochet in each stitch for three more rounds. Then I already joined my other pink colored yarn and I'm going to make two rounds of one single crochet in every stitch with my different color. And like I said, you can change colors wherever you want to make your own unique color stripe design on the tail and your dragon. Then I'm joining back to my main colored yarn and then I'm going to make an increase round, one single crochet into two stitches. I mean, not four stitches, sorry. One single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the fifth stitch. So one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the fifth stitch. And repeat that pattern all the way around back to where you started. You should have 36 total stitches in the round. Then you can just make one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds and then come back. Then you just make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the tail onto the dragon. So go ahead and stuff the tail and then you're going to position the tail on the dragon to sew it on. Then you're just going to line up the tail and just sew along the base of the tail. All around the base of the tail. And then I just had my tail underneath the beads. So I just went all around just sewing in and out. And then make sure that you don't cover your beads as you sew. This is what my tail looks like after sewing it in place. Now we're ready to make the scales that go down the back. So you're going to take your sparkly yarn and you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down. And then we're going to make a chain. I'm only going to show four of them on video tutorial, but you're going to make a chain of 12. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 12 and then come back. After you finish a chain of 12, you're going to make a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. So you yarn over, go into the fourth chain from the hook, bring up a loop, make a double crochet, just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two of the loops. You have two loops remaining, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the two remaining loops. Then you're going to make one double crochet into each stitch back across. Then you're going to chain three. So, so far I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten double crochet for the row. So chain three, one, two, three, turn your work, and then you're going to make a double crochet into the next stitch over. And you're going to make one double crochet into every stitch across, 
and that should give you a stitch count of 10. And then you're going to chain 3 and repeat until you have 3 more rows. So you're going to want a total of 4. After you finish a total of 4 rows, then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the ends together. So now just take that small loose yarn end and fold it towards the center and then bring two corners together to form a triangle. And then you're going to take and get your tapestry needle. And then you're going to sew the edges together to form a triangle. So you just go in and out sewing the two edges together forming a triangle. Now your scale is ready to be sewn onto the dragon. So now you're going to take and place the scale onto the back of the dragon's neck. And if you need to pull the head up, then you can use this little triangle to sew to the edge of the scale. But I like the way my head is positioned, so I'm not going to pull the head back. I'm going to leave that flap alone. And then I'm just going to take, lay the triangle down on the side, and then just go in through the base. You want to leave a long loose yarn end for tying a knot. So then I'm going to go right back through so I can tie a knot. And then you're just going to stretch the scale slightly, not much, you don't want to distort the neck. Then you're just going to take and sew all along the base. And you can take and alternate. So I'm going to go back to the other side. And then sew this side down. Because you want the point of the triangle to be facing up. So you want it to go up on the dragon's neck. So that's how I sewed mine on. I just went in and out going on different sides and then stretching it slightly and then sewing it in place. And then you're going to make enough scales to where the back is covered down to the tail. So for my dragon I placed three of the, the scales, one on the tail and then two, one on the back and then one on the neck. So now for the dragon wing, I'm going to show you how to make the triangles for the wings. Just take, the, you're going to use two different colors for the wings. I'm using my sparkle pink and then the other colored pink, which is pretty in pink. So I'm starting with my pretty in pink. I'm just going to fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop. Then I'm going to hold the base of the loop, the middle finger and thumb, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for my slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and then the loop around the hook. And then you're going to make a chain of six. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. After you make your chain of six, you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into the second chain from the hook and bring up a loop, make a single crochet, and then you're just going to make a single crochet in each stitch back across, which will give you a stitch count of five. Then you're going to turn your work, go into the next stitch over, and make a single crochet, 
and then you're going to make a single crochet in each stitch across and that's going to give you a stitch count of four then turn your work go into the next stitch over bring up a loop make a single crochet make one single crochet in each stitch back across which gives you a stitch count of three turn your work go into the next stitch and make a single crochet the next stitch for a single crochet for a stitch count of two then turn your work and then slip stitch into the next stitch so just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook then you're going to go ahead and finish off just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the triangles together now for one wing you're going to need two of the same color and then two of the alternate color and they're all all the triangles are made the same way and then you're also going to need the triangles for the other wing so there's two of one color and then two of the alternate color for one wing now I'm going to show you how to make the dragon wing you're going to take all four pieces pick up one of each color and then you're going to take one of the long ends that you left for sewing put it onto your tapestry needle and then just line up the two ends of the point of the triangle and then just sew the two ends together make sure that you keep the wrong side on the wrong side and the right side on the right side. So the wrong side has the little ridge created by you sewing the edges of the triangle together. So then when you reach the end just tie a knot and then just bury the loose yarn ends and then for my loose yarn ends I bury them along the ridge so you can see the little ridge created from sewing it so you just this is the wrong side so I'm just going to take and weave the loose yarn in through the ridge on the wrong side So you can see how I buried most of the loose yarn ends. I just left one long one for the point of the triangle. Then I'm going to get my next color and then line it up with the, keep the points together, the points of the triangles together, and then you want to alternate the colors. And then you just take and sew along the edge. So this is how my work looks so far. You can see that I'm burying any loose yarn ends that I don't need. Here's the ridges on the wrong side and then this is what the right side looks like and I have these two long ends that I'm going to use to sew. Then I'm going to take my last triangle and then I'm going to sew this one in place. So again I'm alternating colors and make sure that the ridge stays on the wrong side and then sew the last triangle in place. Then your wing is ready to be sewn on the dragon. So then you just take the wing and I'm going to be sewing the purple portion to the back of the dragon so I'm going to bring my purple long loose yarn end up to where I can sew the wing in place. So you want your wing to face so that the right side is facing towards the front of the dragon. So the ridged wrong side is facing towards me as I sew it in place. So now I'm just going to position it 
and then just sew it onto the back of the dragon. And then once you've sewn it in place, you can take and tie a knot. And then when you sew the other wing on, make sure that you sew it so that they're even or look the same way. You don't want them to be crooked. And then once you've sewn it in place, you can take and bury the loose yarn in. So I'm just going to bury my loose yarn in into the wing itself. And then I'm just going to trim it. And then you have your little wing. And then you're going to make the wing the same way on the other side. This is how my wings look on the back of the dragon. And then the front. So now you can add another decorative touch to the top of the head. Just take that little triangle flap at the top of the head and bring up a loop with whatever color yarn that you want to use for the decoration and leave a long loose yarn end for burying into your work. I'm actually going to crochet around that loose yarn end. And then you're just going to chain one and then just make one single crochet in every stitch around. When you get to the tip of the triangle you can put two single crochet into the same stitch before you go back down the opposite side. So here I'm at the tip of the triangle, so I'm going to place two into the same stitch. And then I'm going to turn and just go down the other side. But before I do that, I'm just going to trim my loose yarn end. And then I'm just going to continue down the other side and just make one single crochet in every stitch down the opposite side and then finish off. Then it just adds a cute decoration to the top of your dragon's head. Then your dragon is all finished.